Hello, welcome to today's upload. Today we're going to look at Blood Brothers. We're going to focus on the themes and analyse these themes. Now, whether you are studying drama or English, GCSE, A level, or Key Stage Three, the themes are the same. They are relevant for all. So let's have a look at the themes. Firstly, the Blood Brother themes. We can categorise them into the main themes and then the several smaller themes. We have social class, superstition and fate, violence, nature versus nurture, and friendship. So one of the main themes or questions sent around is social class. Now what you can do is you can pause some of the screens on this PowerPoint and make your own notes or you can sit back and listen and jot down notes. Entirely up to you. So the social class. Willie Russell, the author, shows how class affects how we live our life and the opportunities life offers. The play is an allegory. It is a political message about class and the divide it makes, the inequality in the class system. Now Blood Brothers to me is almost like a psychology test. Uh, what better way to look at different classes by having the same person brought up in a working class and a middle class and look at the opportunities the classes offer that individual. Now that would be impossible. So the closest we could get to that is have identical twins separated at birth put in different classes. So as a social experiment, it would be a fascinating uh, finding. So it, the social class, two twins separated at birth, being brought up in different classes and looking at the opportunities that they, that develops in the story. So another thing with the uh, social class is Thatcherism and the privatisation. Now this is relevant as Willie Russell was talking about the social class and the lack of opportunities because of this. So Thatcherism was closing down the factories, the coal mines, the shipbuilding uh, companies meant there was rife unemployment. Because there was rife unemployment and the factory workers and the miners, there wasn't new jobs for them to go to. Their jobs were gone. It led to the unemployment, which led, which led to financial hardship. And in these times, that can also lead to <clears throat> drug and alcohol abuse. And we see all of this in Mickey as the story develops. Uh, there was the issue with the Thatcherism and the privatisation that the British economy vastly improved. So Margaret Thatcher improved the economy. But how did she improve the economy? She closed down what many of the working class people did as jobs, the factories and the coal mines. And there was a big divide developing between the middle class, the high class and the working class. One way Russell also shows the difference in social classes, Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Lyons. Mrs. Johnson, we learn, has eight children. She's a single parent and she's working class. Whereas Mrs. Lyons, a lady of similar age, is living in luxury. Mrs. Johnson even states, if my child was raised in a palace like this one, he wouldn't have to worry. There's also the relevance of the teachers and the policemen and some of the smaller characters in the play. So the teachers, like the policemen, which are trusted members of society, Russell utilises these roles to show the difference in education between the social class of Mickey and Edward. And we have a scene where we jump from Mickey in school to Edward in school. The policeman is a supposed figure of trust, but he shows a contrast in how he deals with the different classes. So Mickey and Edward have been in trouble and they've been caught by the police. The policeman pays a visit to Mrs Johnson and he warns her that she needs the sort out Mickey, she needs to take responsibility and he talks down to her. When he miss visits Mrs Lyons house he says kids are kids, this is what they get up to don't worry about it. So there's a different way even the police and society deal with the different classes. We have the issue with the catalogue and the finance man. Now in social, the social class issue in here was at this time there was beginning to be established a buy now pay later scheme so a lot like what we have today in our finance when we finance cars and we and we do the catalog shopping and we spread the costs out so this is kind of cultural context the ease of how it, acceptable and easy it was to buy now and spread the payments out 
what this did though with the working class it just increased the debt it was easy to get into debt and we have mrs johnson throughout the play showing that she gets herself into debt she doesn't have the financial stability to have what we class as maybe a normal lifestyle even the milkman now there's an interesting language technique when the milkman speaks he says next week next week next week never arrives uh, he stops delivering the milk until she pays now if we think english language the use of repetition of the phrase next week it emphasizes kind of the problems and the issues that next week never comes it's just excuse after excuse and this leads into mrs johnson singing the song only mine until and in the song only mine until she starts talking about how she can have objects she can have physical elements to her house but they're only hers until it comes to payday and then she has to send them back now this song also has a double meaning because it's, it's a sad song only mine until but you could also refer it to that she's going to lose the baby she's agreed to hand the baby over to mrs Lyons, so the baby is only hers until the next payday when Mrs. Lyons pays her and takes the baby. Um, social class also develops uh, in Act 2 when Mickey spirals further and further into decay with the drugs and the depression. And Edward's life seems to be just improving and going well. So we see the working class the, losing the factory jobs, the no income, the kind of needing the drugs to fight the depression. And Edward's life, he's at university, he's getting work, he's getting jobs, money is not an issue the difference between the contrast between the two starts to develop and the jealousy starts to develop the narrator blames social class and society for all the bad things at the end of the play uh, throughout the play the narrator constantly blames superstition and he constantly says the devil's got your number but at the very end of the play he changes he puts a spin on it and he says do we blame superstition for what we came to pass or could it be what we the English have came to know as class so he blames the changes in class uh, for all the bad doings in the play which leads us on to superstition and fate Mrs Johnson the beginning she says new shoes on the table take them off this is in the same way Mrs Lyons Mrs Johnson's cleaning the house Mrs Lyons comes in with the shopping so is this foreshadowing straight away that there's going to be trouble that we can blame superstition and fate for all the wrongdoings uh, the narrator throughout the play he states shoes upon the table a joker in the pack the salt's been spilled and a looking glass cracked there's one lone magpie overhead gypsies in the woods the devil's got your number so he just reels off different phrases of superstition and fate one after the other so he's emphasizing and pushing the point that it is fair it is superstition uh, mrs johnson even says i'm not superstitious the mother said i'm not superstitious the mother said so again repetition mrs johnson's trying to emphasize she's not superstitious but she clearly is and this gives mrs lyons power mrs johnson being so superstitious mrs lyons jumps on this and it is one way that she is able to manipulate the gullible mrs johnson and again the narrator throughout act one and act two he comes up with the phrase the devil's got your number pushing that fear of superstition that because you've separated the twins at birth that is fair you are playing with superstition it's bad superstition the devil's now got your number we then move on to violence now violence is really interesting in act one the violence is all about the children playing uh, all the games revolve have an aspect of violence but it's pretend it's playing violence we have the gunfights we have the cowboys we have the toy gun even in that fantastic monologue from Mickey about I wish I was our Sammy, he talks about how Sammy's so cool because he's got a catapult, he can spit in your eye from 20 yards. These are all quite aggressive, although it's playing, it's playing violence. So the violence is there throughout the theme of violence, but in Act 1 it's playing and pretend, but as the play progresses, especially in the Act 2, the violence becomes real. So we see a development in the violence. Act 2... Uh, opening Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Lyons scene where Mrs. Lyons visits Mrs. Johnson in a new house uh, at the end of the scene Mrs. Lyons lunges at Mrs. Johnson with a knife as if she's attempting to kill her but most violence does revolve around Sammy it starts as games in that one but it escalates to the gun the scene on the bus and then the shooting which results in the prison a sentence for Mickey 
and then the end scene although it's accidental mickey shoots eddie we have the five the four gunshots sorry the four bang sounds and mickey and eddie are killed in a violent act at the end so violence in my opinion is used to show the lack of control and feelings of weakness from the characters none of the violence is planned or premeditated they do not plan to go out and rob the bus or to shoot each other the violence is all about reactions to situations and heightened emotions especially with mrs lyons and mickey it's reactive and then it brings us to nature and nurture now a lot of my pupils have problems with understanding nature v nurture and what is nature what is nurture well nature is how you were born your genes your parents what is passed down to you you can't do anything about the nature so for example if all your family are tall you're likely to be tall it's in your genes it's it's nature however nurture is how you were brought up the environment in which you live in your class the opportunities you have how you are educated how you are nurtured what you are taught is right or wrong you can be taught right or wrong so throughout the play we see the contrast of opportunities the nurture <coughs> and the similarities shared the nature so there are a lot of similarities between Mickey and Edward because they are twins that is the nature how they are they are similar they are alike you can't change that but the nurture you can change so a few examples the boys meet up naturally and become friends is that fate or is that nature they are naturally drawn to each other it's the nature of twins it's in their nature it's in their genes the nurture though is completely is a complete contrast the rich and the poor the directions it sends their life um, edward is developed in the rich environment mickey in the poor environment but underneath it all they are both decent kind and caring characters we like the characters we like watching them because of their decency the positive opportunities Edward has, his university, employment, parties and money. When he comes back from university, he even says, live like a bohemian. He he is loving life at this point. But this is opposed to the negative opportunities that Mickey has. He goes down the crime route. He's unemployed. He's got depression. There's substance abuse. There's beginning to be a big divide and a jealousy between the two. And this leads on to one of the final themes, the theme of friendship. So the friendship of growing up, becoming blood brothers, the bond of friendship. Blood brothers, it's a bond. It's a symbol of blood brothers that they cut the hands, they mix the blood. Okay, you could say that's superstition as well as an element there. But there is a bond of friendship. And that's the first time they meet, remember, they become blood brothers in their first meeting. So there is that immediate friendship and bond. Now, importantly, the differences in the upbringing in Act 1, when they are 7-year-olds, remember we see them in three stages, 7-year-old, 14-year-old, 21-year-old. As 7-year-olds, the differences uh, serve as stability and support that the other, uh, the other brother needs. They like the differences. There is no jealousy. It's, you know big words, you're cool. You know slang words, you're cool. They enjoy the differences. But as they grow older, the jealousy develops due to the nature and the benefits of Edward, the relationship between Linda and Mickey. We've also got the song between uh, Edward and Mickey in Act 2 when they're saying, if only I was, and they're comparing themselves with the other brother. And that's jealousy. So in Act 1 they were saying, you're cool because you've got this. In Act 2 it's, you're cool because you've got this, which means I'm not cool. That's kind of the message that we get in there. So the friendship is flawed, and this is the ultimate. It's due to the separation of the boys as babies. The different upbringing, nurture, has caused fractures in their friendship. And that results to the jealousy uh, and the problems that come at the end of Act 2. And we all know what happens there. It results in Mrs. Lyons tipping Mickey off about Edward and Linda, and then the gun scene. And we go to the end scene there. So we have covered the themes. I've wrote quite a lot on some of these PowerPoint pages, but that's so that you can pause, make your own notes. I've also tried to include quotes where I can to help you out. Uh, please feel free to like, subscribe, or even contact me if you have any questions.